listening to the Erica Duran Show, Freedom Based Lifestyle Design Radio, Episode 41. Ho Ho No with Lisa Mallet. Aloha and welcome to the Erica Duran Show, Freedom Based Lifestyle Design Radio. Productively live and work from anywhere in the world. Now, here's your host, Erica Duran. Aloha e como mai. Hello and welcome to the Erica Duran Show, Freedom Based Lifestyle Design Radio. Welcome to episode 41. I'm your host, Erica Duran, and I'm here at the beautiful Surf and Sand Resort in Laguna Beach, California. Today on the show, you're going to meet Lisa Malice. I have a lot in common with her. We were both professional organizers who then went into a more of a productivity training business. So Lisa Malice time strategy visionary believes you deserve to live the life of your dreams feeling in control and fulfilled the crazy quote i'm so busy feeling does not need to be reality each day can be productive rewarding and fun she is the author of 30 days to success an awe-inspiring journal your time your life a busy woman's guide to simplifying your day and Ho Ho No, Tips for Stress-Free and Organized Holiday Season. And the Dog Ate My Homework, Time Management Techniques for High School Students. She lives in Chargin Falls, Ohio, with her husband Lou and dog Newton. She loves chocolate, the beach, and country music. Learn more about Lisa at SystemSavvyConsulting.com. Now, Lisa is in our Facebook group, so if you'd like to hang out with us and over 500 other like-minded escape artists, you can go to ericaduran.co forward slash FB group, and that link will redirect you right to the group where on Facebook where you can request access. We recently had some group members get together for their own tele-summit, so business and relationship building are definitely growing in there. Get in while it's still intimate at ericaduran.co forward slash FB group. Now, that link and all the other links and resources that we mentioned in the show will be at ericaduran.co forward slash 41. Now, your freedom is waiting. Let's not waste any time. Okay, escape artist. Today we have Lisa Malice on the line. Are you there, Lisa? I am. Hi, Erica. Hi. How's it going? It is awesome. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Perfect. And some of our audience members uh, don't know you too well, so where are you calling from today? I am calling from Chagrin Falls, Ohio in the United States, which is about 40 minutes east of Cleveland. Wow. I've never been there, I have to admit. It, must, it sounds like it's cold there. <laughs> Funny you should say that. Yes, it is today. <laughs> and can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your business? Absolutely. I am a time strategy visionary, which means that I help people who are a little overwhelmed, they're feeling like they're overcommitted, and they are losing control of their schedules. Uh, they have a lot of plates in the air, and it's like if one more thing gets added, then it's all going to fall apart. And so I help them regain control of their calendar, re- regain control of their days so that they can do more of what they love and have that freedom and that relief of not feeling like they're balancing everything all at once. Perfect. Yeah, we, I know we have a lot in common being, you know, former professional organizers and then I did productivity consulting for a really long time. So I know exactly the type of ideal clients that you're looking for. <laughs> yes. And what does a freedom-based lifestyle mean to you? So for me, a freedom-based lifestyle is a lifestyle where I get paid for what I love to do every mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm thinking back when I first started my my professional career, I was in high school education as a teacher and as a administrator. And though I was very good at what I did, I didn't want to get up and go to work every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I still went every day. And it it's one of those things where um, you'll hear just because you're good at it, it doesn't mean it's your calling and it doesn't mean it's what you're meant to do. And for me, that was my route in education. 
And once I morphed into eventually where I'm at now as a certified coach, working with uh, busy people, I, I love it every day. Every day I can't wait to go to work. And so for me, a freedom-based lifestyle is exactly that, doing what I love and getting paid enough that I can live off that. Right, right. We have to still live, right? There's no right. guaranteed paycheck, so... <laughs> And, uh, let's see here. And you, this is, uh, we're recording this mid-November, so it's a very timely topic of your new book, and it's called Ho Ho No. Can you tell us all about your new book? Absolutely. I'd love to. Thank you for <laughs> asking. I wrote this book because <laughs> this tends to be a very stressful time for many of my clients because we are busy people for the most part. And we're already stretched pretty thin. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden we think that we can add in our end of the year goals and the projects we wanted to get done before January 1st. Plus we can add in all those personal and professional socializing activities. Plus we can add in all these things with family. Plus we can add in various religious or volunteer activities. Mm -hmm. Well, of course you're stressed. <laughs> you took what was already a pretty well-packed day, and you're adding in all these extra things at the end of the year. And, and it doesn't have to be that crazy. And about 15 years ago, before I got a handle on my own stress around this time, I remember sitting in the middle of my kitchen floor crying. Oh. And it was the day after Thanksgiving. And we had 40 people about to come to my home to eat, and I had reached the breaking point, absolutely reached the breaking point. I had found out that one of um, my relatives had just became a vegetarian, and I was so sure I didn't have enough food for her to eat. And, like, that was it. That's all it took. Put me right over oh the edge. Oh, my God. And I'm crying. You know, my husband comes in, and I'm just like, I hate Thanksgiving. <laughs> I hate your family. I hate my family. Oh I my hate gosh. everything. <laughs> and so, you know, the good news is that is no longer the case, but I know I'm not a lot alone. You know, possibly everyone is not sitting on their kitchen floor screaming they hate the holidays, <laughs> but – you know, you do get that extra stress. And so this is where that book comes from. And the premise of the book, truly, if you boil it down to one sentence, it's do more of what you love and do less of what you don't. Mm -hmm. And the book walks you through how to identify what are the things you really like, what are the things you don't, how can you start to get out of the things you don't like and do more of what you do, and then how can you be more efficient and effective along the way. And so that's the whole premise of this book. Right. And it's it's so needed. I remember I wrote a few articles a couple of years ago and they got the most uh comments and shares and excitement of they were around the holiday times as well and they were, you know, all these extra to do's that we have and people don't even stop to think, do they even like this tradition anymore? And they just keep doing their regular holiday traditions and all. And they, they don't even stop to think if it's still necessary or if they enjoy it. So that was, I, I can see that that's what, what your book is trying to explain to is kind of wake them up. Absolutely. And do you yeah, like about, this? <laughs> right. It's about building awareness. Um, at one of one of the stories that's in the book, it came from one of the workshops I did. One of the ladies sat there, and all of a sudden, she just looks, just stares at me, and I, I'm like, okay, I have to stop. What's going on? Like you, out of all the people in the room, like she just had this look. I'm like, do you want to share? And she said, I have made my children, adult children now, trud out and cut a live tree in the snow every year to put up in my home. And she said, and you know what? When they were little, they loved it. She goes, and I hate it. I hate the pine needles falling in my home. And, like, she lists all right. these things she hates about it. And she said, and I'll bet you if I ask them, they're only doing it to make me happy, and I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. right. And so um, I followed up with her a couple months later to find out, you know, like, what did you do? <laughs> and she bought some of the – um pine uh, roping so that she still had that smell in her home, but no longer had 
the whole hassle of the big life tree. Right. And I think if people are reading your book now with the holidays in mind, I think there's probably a lot of things they can carry into just their normal life too. Yes. Like looking at things in your business that you don't enjoy and you know, you just keep doing, um, like, let's say, you know, you don't like Google Plus, but you just keep posting every day on there because you think you're supposed to do it and, and, you know, things like that in your business. I think people, they could read your book and take it, the information to other places in their life. Absolutely. And how did you know that just on Monday I decided I was dropping Google Plus? <laughs> I didn't. Well, you know, they did do a lot of updates lately that are annoying. So maybe that's maybe that's what pushed you to the edge of that. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm done. <laughs> my, well, my Hootsuite decided to do that for me because it, it, every day I get uh, error posts now. Your, your scheduled post didn't make it. I get these emails and I'm like, oh, I guess that's a sign I shouldn't be on there. <laughs> well, let's see. Now, a lot of people take their foot off the gas during the holidays in their business, and they and they think that it's a slower time of year, and they won't get any clients anyway, so why bother? And I don't think that's really true for most businesses. Most people, if they're struggling, like in my business, if they're struggling in their business and they're not making enough money, I mean, in the holidays, they're in an even bigger pain point for, for my sake, and in yours case, they're in a bigger pain point during the holidays, too, because they need to get control of their time. So are there any strategies in your business that that to make the holiday season less stressful that you use? And or is there anything, I guess another way to ask that, is there anything you do to keep your momentum so you don't get that why bother there? No one's going to sign up anyway kind of stuff going on. <laughs> Absolutely. So there's a couple things that I do. Um that some of the listeners may find helpful. Okay. So one of the things that I do is I try, I set out, you know, what are my goals for during the holiday season? And so that I know what am I trying to hit and what are the activities that I need to do to reach that? So then I will then decide, okay, what time am I taking off? Because historically I do take time off. Um, and I know not everyone listening to this will um, celebrate the same holidays, mm-hmm. but I take time off at, at Christmas. And so, you know, but that doesn't mean my business is dormant at Christmas. And so I will create blog posts ahead of time and schedule those to post. And then I'll just check in every once in a while to reply to comments. Mm-hmm. Newsletters will be scheduled in advance and they'll still go out. So I'm still top of mind for people. I use social oomph versus Hootsuite. So I still have posts that go out on various social media platforms. But the other thing I do is I send my appreciation gifts for clients and referral partners and people who help me in my business. I do those for Thanksgiving versus at the winter, whatever winter holiday you choose to celebrate. Um, Because I find that one, if I'm sending them around Christmas, they're getting lost in the shuffle. Mm-hmm. If I'm sending them like January 1st, sometimes everyone's on a diet. So if I'm sending <laughs> food, no one appreciates it. That's funny. <laughs> um, you know, so I hit it at Thanksgiving, but it also allows me to kind of spread out some of the work that I would be doing. So I'll automate things that I can mm-hmm. automate. Um, I make sure I check in. I have a virtual assistant, and so I check in with Holly to find out what time is she taking off to make sure we schedule things out well in advance. But so I'm just strategic about it. Mm-hmm. And and have a plan in place. That's funny you do the Thanksgiving. I I do New Year's because I thought people, um, you know, gets lost in the shuffle with Christmas and Hanukkah. So I would send out New Year's stuff to referral partners and Plus, it fit with being a productivity expert to catch them in January. It was more, it was more, um, appropriate for me anyways. Right. Um, and I find sometimes too, I'll send stuff. Um, it, last year I missed the, my Thanksgiving goal. Um, I had a new, I was working with a new supplier on, um, some collateral and, um, we missed Thanksgiving. <laughs> by like weeks <laughs> and so I actually sent my stuff out at the end of January as kind of a reminder of okay it's now three weeks since you set your new year's resolutions right where are you here's a you know here's a reminder go at it. Like, <laughs> you know it's like I think you can go 
I just say the December time is tough. Oh, to to get a hold of people and everything. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, and so it doesn't mean I stop doing the things that help me build my business. I'll still, my most um, well-received presentation is the one about the holidays. <laughs> now, for whatever reason, people want to book that in December. And at that point, you know, it's kind of late. <laughs> right. Someone called me like, can you come in and do this December 21st? I'm like, well, there's not much I'm going to be able to tell you that's going to help you for four days. But Sure. Um, you know, so I still do those types of things. I just lessen a lot of it that's not automated. Oh, it gives yourself a break too. Yeah. I, I just don't, when my clients get into that mode of, well, no one's going to sign up anyway. And I'm like, well, you know, still make the contacts and everything because you're planting the seeds for, you know, January, February when they are willing to listen. And, you know, it might just take a little bit more um, contacts to get someone to sign up in during the holidays, but it still happens. It's not a, you know, Christmas <laughs> miracle or anything. It still happens. Well, <laughs> and you know, you know, a lot of people say that what you receive in your business now is directly related to what you were doing 90 days ago. Right, right. And so if you're taking off the entire month of December... Right. March is not going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, going back to your book a little bit, um, it's, it, how are you using that strategically in your business? I always hear the, the, the phrase, oh, the book, writing a book is the best business card, you know, you can have as, as far as marketing strategy or how is it helping your business? So that absolutely is. It's the best business card. Um, there are people who will see me and go, oh, you're the ho-ho no lady. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're, like, like, watch, you're like, watch it. <laughs> I know. I'm like, make sure you add that no on there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's scary. So for, on one hand, they're, you know, they're connecting me with that book, which is great because you want people to remember who you are. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's a, it's a visibility thing and a, um, almost a branding thing in a way. Uh, because again, the book is in line with what I do and the problems that I solve. So I'm happy to be connected with it. I have written a number of books, um, that have all been parts of who I was at different, it, or representative of who I was at different points in my career. So this book is very representative of who I am now. So being um, associated with it is a great thing. Plus, I use it as a lead generator. Mm -hmm. The book has great value for people. So if I'm giving a presentation, I'll just say, pass me up your business cards, and I'll make sure you get the PDF of this book within the next week so that you can follow through on these ideas easily. And, you know, I'll send that out, and now I have, I've added to my list. You know, when I'm networking and I meet someone, you want to, it's not about me, it's about them, mm-hmm. yet I need to make sure when I we walk away, they know who I am and what I do. And so when we exchange business cards, I, I can just easily say, I'm going to send you, you're going to love this book. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely going to help with what we've been talking about. And it's an easy way to make that, that intro versus saying, I'm going to sign you up for my newsletter. Right. Right. You know, and because the newsletter has tons of value, but it doesn't have hold the same weight. Right, right. Great, great strategy. Um, and I know we didn't talk about this before, but right, I'm sure everyone has a book inside of them, but they just don't make that leap to write it. What, um, can you tell us a little bit of your strategy, how you just got going on it and you actually accomplished it? <laughs> Absolutely. And so, um, there are people who have written books who are going to listen to what I'm about to say, and they're going to say, oh, my gosh, she cheated. Yeah. <laughs> and my answer is it does not matter because the book it's is done. out there. <laughs> it's done. I actually wrote – I it actually started as a presentation mm-hmm. that I gave, and then – a couple times, so I had a PowerPoint, a couple times through the presentation, I created some supplemental handouts to add value to the presentation. Then I started writing blog posts based on what people were saying and doing at the presentation. And after two years of doing, I think it was like a series of nine blog posts, so I did them one year and then the next year I revamped them. And at the end of the second year, I was like, holy cow, there's a book sitting here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I pulled it all together and I sent it to my virtual assistant and said, read through these blog posts and see, do you think there's a book here? And she read through them. She's like, absolutely. And so she just kind of edited out 
because every blog post has an intro and a conclusion and right. a reference back. So she ent- edited some of those pieces out, sent it back to me so I could just look at the meat of it, and then I worked off of it and, and edited it from there. Perfect. I don't think that's cheating. I was just on a podcast as a guest the other day, and the guy asked me, how do you have so much content? You have a blog, a podcast, and a video sh- YouTube show? And I'm like, yeah, but I repurposed the content. So a lot of the podcast was me reading a blog post, and a lot of the videos was me acting out a blog post. So <laughs> I repurposed things all. That's efficient. That's productive. That's what you're all about. <laughs> Absolutely. And so, like, we, I laugh because it really is one 45-minute presentation mm-hmm. that turns itself into all these things. That's perfect. I, I don't think it's cheating. You're safe. <laughs> Good. <laughs> all right, Lisa. That was a lot of great information. Are you ready for the Wiki Wiki round? I absolutely am. Okay. We are just going to take a quick little break for our sponsor that makes this all possible. Want to design your own freedom-based luxury lifestyle? To get started, you can apply for my complimentary Aloha strategy session. Aloha, I'm Erica Duran, a freedom-based luxury lifestyle designer and high-level business coach and mentor. This complimentary Aloha strategy session is right for you if you are tired of piecing together all that free stuff online and you're ready to implement your own systems and unique way of living and working. You desire to work productively from anywhere in the world and achieve that laptop lifestyle, but you don't want to spend all your time chained to your desk. And you are so done being baffled by technology. You want to earn at least five to 20000 per month consistently in your consulting, coaching, training, or other entrepreneurial venture. You see other people charging premium prices for their programs and services, and you just can't seem to crack that code. You desire a high-level coach to peel back the curtain and share all her secrets. Does any of this sound like you? If so, I'd love to invite you to take advantage of this limited time offer today and apply for your complimentary Aloha Strategy Session with me by going to ericaduran.co forward slash aloha. A lifestyle of freedom and luxury is waiting for you, so let's not waste any time. Never settle. Mahalo. Want to partner with me? Would you like to get your business showcased in front of thousands of productive-minded lifestyle entrepreneurs and travelers? Why not become a sponsor of the Erica Duran Show, Freedom-Based Lifestyle Design Radio? Go to ericaduran.co forward slash sponsor to see if this partnership is right for you. Mahalo. All right, Lisa, we're back. Are you there? I am. Cool. We are going to head into this wiki wiki round, our lightning round here on Freedom Based Lifestyle Design Radio. What are your three favorite tools that you're using for your business or life right now that's making your life easier? So I was listening to um, one of your podcasts <laughs> recently and you had Lisa Woodruff on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my, my answer is the same and I actually have had conversations with Lisa and we uh, don't live that far apart. We're about four and a half oh, hours apart. Oh, I didn't even know and, you knew each other. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I know. Isn't that, yeah, a small world. And pencil and paper is my number one also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that happens a lot on this show. So, <laughs> Yeah, so for those of you who haven't listened to Lisa's episode yet, be sure you go back. Um, I think it was episode 37. Mm-hmm. So, um, But pencil and paper, absolutely for me. I am a tactile learner. I know that about myself. And so I need to write to remember. I need to write to think, um, to sequence things, to all of that has to happen, pencil to paper. So that's my first okay. uh, tool. My second, and I, I am definitely a low tech gal. So my second tool is Google Drive. Okay. My virtual assistant and I have numerous shared documents so that I can track progress of where we're at, what we've done, um, you know, if there was a task out there that we've decided to take off, uh, all of that stuff. Uh, instead of a lot of emails back and forth, mm-hmm. we just share some documents and she can look right there. And know what I need from her. My blog post schedule's up there, and so she knows what I've done writing, what she needs to edit, all of that. And then my third tool that I like for a similar reason, but for a different 
uh, purpose is Dropbox. Okay. There are things that I just don't like as well in Google Drive. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so for that purpose, is Dropbox. So Google Drive, I love when we're collaborating. Like, I think that's the best place to collaborate. Okay. Dropbox, I think, is a great tool to use when people are accessing the same document. So I'm a chair of a committee for one of the organizations I'm in, and we just put on a a big event. And so we had tons of stuff that we were sending back and forth as attachments on email. And finally, after a couple weeks, I thought, oh, these just need to be in Dropbox. The most updated flyer goes in Dropbox. The information about the speakers goes in. That way everyone can access it at any time and not have to search through countless emails trying to find the one email that had the one attachment mm-hmm. that they were looking for. Perfect. So those are my tools. Perfect. Yeah, I'm a, I'm such an iSheep Apple girl all the way. So I, I use iCloud in a similar mm-hmm. way as Dropbox. But I keep going back to Dropbox because it is just something about it just makes it easier. And I I keep trying to be loyal to Apple, but I keep cheating and going to Dropbox. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, what are your best pieces of advice for maybe some new entrepreneurs we have listening, some struggling entrepreneurs we have listening? What are some your three key pieces of advice? So the first one is – Know that you may be great in what you do, but that does not necessarily mean that you are uh, ready and able to be a great business owner. Okay. So, you know, True. when I started, you know, I'm like, I am a great coach. I, I absolutely know that I'm a great coach. I know my clients get value every time we meet. However, I didn't know the first thing about running a business. My my background was in education. Mm-hmm. You know, I went in, I taught, I left. And mm-hmm. That's what I did. And so my first advice is to do something to build up your business base if you don't have one. Hire a business coach, take some online classes, read some books, something. Um, because there's two parts of owning your own business. And only one of them is your skill. Yeah. <laughs> the other one is all that other stuff. I totally um, so agree that, with the hiring a business coach part. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, the second piece is, and it, and it may sound contradictory to what I just said, and I don't mean it to, but it's, it doesn't have to be perfect, just get started. Right. Um, you know, whatever it is, you just, you know, get going with it. But when you get going, have a plan, even if the plan changes 50 times. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, lay out, have some idea of what you're doing, which leads into the third one. Be prepared that your business may morph completely right. from when you start to two years later and be okay with that. Right. You know, mine did. I started when I left education. I thought I was going to be a professional organizer working in people's closets. Right. You know, you and I shared a conversation a couple months ago. You know, I lasted like three weeks, and I'm like, I so could not do this. Please don't make me clean someone's closet. I don't want to do that. Right, right. You know, and then I was scrambling with like, holy cow, you know, I've quit my full-time job, and I hate what it is I'm doing. (laughs) Now what? Mm -hmm. And it's okay because I'm perfect where I am right now, and I was okay with that morphing. It's okay not knowing. It really does morph, and that's one of my biggest, things I work on with with my clients because they're all let's say they're a new they want to be a professional organizer and they're all gung-ho and they just they want to have a website called you know simply organized or whatever they want to call it and I'm like don't call your website that because you don't even know if you're going to be an organizer in six weeks you know Mm -hmm. it's going to totally morph your don't say you're the garage queen uh, because on your website because you know next week you might find out you hate garages and you're going to be a uh, relationship coach you know which right. has happened so i'm like please just use your your name as your url please that's a begging client sometimes <laughs> absolutely and it's funny because i saved the url or i bought the url of my name mhm uh, right when I bought System Savvy Consulting, because System Sa- that works in for so many areas, but I knew if I ever wanted to morph completely, I still had saved Lisa Malice. <laughs> right, and I just, like now with just using my name, I could change my whole business model in a day and not really, you know, hurt my branding or marketing that much. Mm-hmm. 
when I owned clutter bugs, I mean, every time I, and I wanted to morph into productivity, oh, that didn't uh, work. And I had to just redo the whole brand. It's just right. insane because it does, it does morph and people think they're so interested in whatever subject they start out with, but it just never stays put. So <laughs> great pieces of advice. Now, Lisa, do you have a free gift or anything you'd like to share with the listeners? This is going to shock you. Oh, <laughs> but my free gift is a copy, their very own copy of Ho Ho No. The book we've been talking about. <laughs> yeah, I know. Who would have thought that? But it is. Um, and so all, all they need to do is shoot me an email which I know you'll put in the show notes for uh-huh. them, and I will make sure they get a, their very own copy of Ho Ho No. Perfect, and they need to hurry up and get that for the holidays, but like we said, it can apply to life in general and business in general. It doesn't have to be the busy holidays. And uh, what can you give your main website out again, please? Your- Absolutely. <laughs> it's systemsavvyconsulting.com. Dot com And Savvy has two Vs. Okay, perfect. That will also go in the show notes. And I think I know a little bit about this next question. We are not going to find you on Google+, Plus, but where yeah, can we right. find you? <laughs> you will most likely find me on Facebook. Facebook. Okay. That, is, that is the easiest uh, on my phone. <laughs> Um, for so, and that's typically where I check it is on my phone, and so that is the platform that I can check the easiest, and so that's where I tend to interact the most. Yeah, and uh, listeners, uh, Lisa is a very active member in our Facebook community, so you probably already met her and didn't put two to, two together yet. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Lisa, it was great having you. Thank you so much. Have happy stress free holidays, and I'll talk to you soon. Sounds great. You too. Bye. Pal Hana, work is done on this episode. Don't you just love Lisa's ideas for taking the stress out of the holidays and that these strategies can also be used in your business and almost any other area of your life? Be sure to grab her book. She is so generous to be giving it away for free to all the listeners. So that book that she's given away again is her Ho Ho Notebook. Uh, I also have uh, quite a few articles of my own for taking the stress and all the shoulds, all of the things you think you you know have to do just because of tradition out of the holidays. So I'll be adding those links to those articles to the show notes at ericaduran.co forward slash 41. Remember to come out and hang out with Lisa and me in the Facebook group. I am in there almost every day answering questions and providing resources for the members in there. Lisa is a very active member. I share a lot in the group that I don't normally share anywhere else online or through email. And all the links again for this episode are available at ericaduran.co forward slash 41, including the link to Lisa's free book that she's gifting all of us. Mahalo for listening. Ahui ho. Until we meet again, sending you aloha. Thank you for listening to The Erica Duran Show, freedom-based lifestyle design radio. Be sure to go to ericaduran.co to get all of this episode's show notes and resource links. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe. Never settle. Mahalo.